Now, there are two kinds of people when Jesus comes. His bride, the ones who are ready, they will say, Lo, this is our God, we've waited for him. But the majority of the tribes of the earth who have rejected Jesus will mourn. And it will be a, terrible, a ter uh, terrible and terrifying day for them. Number eight, how will Christ's second coming affect the earth? Now stay with me, there's a point in all of these puzzle pieces I'm giving you. I want you to have the clear scenario. If you understand all these points, you'll not be confused by the false uh, left behind scenarios of the second coming. Revelation 16 verse 18. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. Every island and mountain is moved out of its place by this earthquake. Talk about 8.4 on the Richter scale. They say the great earthquake there that uh, hit uh, the first time was 9 on the Richter scale. Picture, if you will, a 20 on the Richter scale earthquake. I mean, that's what it's going to be like when Jesus comes. Furthermore, it says in Revelation 16, 21, a great hail from heaven fell upon men, every hailstone about the weight of a talent. Now, sometimes we talk about the weather all the time. We talk about the weather when there isn't any weather. Right? Can you imagine someone elbowing you and say, did you see the hail yesterday? Yep. Hail. 100 pound blocks. You catch that on the news? Is the world, is that a secret when that happens? Or is everybody going to know when you got hailstones like that? How may we know when we are in the last generation? 2 Peter 3, verse 3 and 4, There shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the age. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And our people are so preoccupied now that even Christians, spiritualism is permeating the church. How should we respond to the nearness of the day of the Lord in the battle of Armageddon? How do we get ready for this? Answer, Luke 21, verse 28. Now when these things begin to happen... Look up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. That doesn't mean you walk around like this until you get a crick in your neck. It means you live in an attitude of expectancy of the imminent advent. So we need to wake up to the truth that we are right there on the borders of eternity right now. I believe that this is the generation. I really do. How can I be certain I will not be deceived by Satan regarding the second coming of Christ. Matthew 24, verse 26. Jesus said, Wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. He's in secret chambers. If Jesus says if it's a secret, suddenly someone says, turn, turn on the TV. Jesus just appeared in Jerusalem. I wouldn't even turn it on, friends. You'd be hypnotized. Go not forth. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 27, for as lightning comes out of the east and flashes to the west, even so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. How do we avoid being deceived? Isaiah 8.20, according to the law in the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in him. Friends, we've got to say this is where we stand. Amen? Amen. It's going to go by the word of God. It doesn't matter how popular or unpopular it is. Heaven and earth may pass away. His word does not pass away. It is the rock that we are to trust and build on. Now notice what we've just considered about the second coming. It's not a secret. His coming is literal, it's personal, it's visible, it's audible, it's physical, it's vitalizing, it's glorious, it's climatic. We are living in the day that should prepare for the second coming of the Lord. What is it going to look like just before Jesus comes? It's going to look a lot like today. Oh, but Pastor Doug, some things need to happen first. You're right. And the final events are going to be so rapid it will make your head spin. Friends, the best time to get ready for a test is not the day of the test. It's before, right? If you want to get ready for a storm, you can't wait until the lightning starts to crack. You've got to be ready now. How can I be certain to be ready when Jesus comes? Jesus says in John chapter 6, verse 37, He that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. That's my appeal to you, friends, that you'll come to him just like you are. 
John 1, verse 12, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. God wants to give you that power, that you can be a new creature, that you can be ready for his coming. You know, there's, there's been sort of a, a seductive, hypnotic, paralyzing influence this dangerous idea that we can still love the world and be saved in our sins. You can come to Jesus with your sins just like you are. Don't ever doubt that. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever your experience, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, you can come to Jesus right now. As many as received Him, He will then give you power to be sons of God. Christianity is not just about the justification we receive when we come to Christ. It's about then a sanctifying power that will transform you, give you a new mind, you become a new creature. He wants to fill you with that power where you walk with the Lord day by day and you live in the atmosphere of heaven. If you thought that you might die tomorrow, if you thought you might die in a week, how serious would you be about your relationship with Jesus today? How serious would you be about spiritual priorities? And by the way, I don't want to make anyone nervous, but there is nobody here that knows which day is your last day, unless you're planning suicide. So when's the best time to get ready? Right now. And you know what? When you do, you can live moment by moment in the power of the Lord with that peace of the Holy Spirit in your life. Matthew 24, verse 4, 44. Therefore, be ye ready. Live in a constant attitude of preparation. It's not this idea of like filing your tax the day before it's due. You can't prepare for Jesus like that. And why would you want to give Him the leftovers of your life? Come to Him now. Give Him your strength and your heart. Be ready now.